Hi. So my question is really, if you look at, you know, back to FDR Executive Order 6102, confiscation <laughs> of gold, once this thing will happen, and I think it will eventually happen, what prevents the government, let's say, to take control of the exchanges with basically store all the information, who has what, and then back to Executive Order 6102? Well, they can take over the exchanges. They won't get much of the Bitcoin, because all of you have learned from coming to these events that you do not store your Bitcoin long-term on exchanges. Your keys, your coins, not your keys, not your coins. Um, they may discover information about who has used exchanges. And maybe if you buy Bitcoin on an exchange, they may come after you and ask you to provide that Bitcoin. And what that will do is it will drive the entire economy underground, so you will no longer be able to use your bank account to buy Bitcoin. But guess what? At that point, you can't use your bank account to buy Bitcoin, because no one wants your stinking dollars anymore. And at that point, you have to do something else. You have to start bartering for your services. So you have to offer services or products that are useful to other people, and get Bitcoin for those from the few of us who got paid for our Bitcoin and didn't buy it on an exchange and still have some. What it's also going to do, as soon as they do that, is it's going to increase the spread between Bitcoin and the national currency. Anywhere they do this, as soon as you ban it, the spread increases. When the spread goes to 25 percent, who does that go to? Who gets paid that 25 percent? Whoever is able to inject Bitcoin into the market, which becomes a fantastic motivator for people to start smuggling Bitcoin into the country. Right? Uh, and they will, just like has happened in Venezuela, just like happened in India, just like happened in all of these other countries. So, then the people who are smuggling Bitcoin into the country, which really you don't really need to smuggle Bitcoin because it's everywhere, so it's relatively easy to do. Um, they get a 25% premium, and what do they use that 25% premium to do? They widen the route by which they've been smuggling money in and try to bring more money in. And as long as that premium persists, that route keeps getting wider and wider and wider, and a bigger flow of money starts pouring in. Right? Because think of physics, right? I don't know if any of you like physics, I love physics. Potential energy. You've got a fantastic difference in potential energy between the two sides of the border, right? And that will cause Bitcoin to flow downhill. <laughs> into the area where it has a 25% premium. And until the two levels are equalized, it will continue to flow very, very fast. The bigger the difference, the more it will flow. And the more you push it down in the inside country, the more you make the difference, and you drive flows in there. So it will drive a giant underground market. And of course, at that point, they have to enforce the law. So how can you tell if the the person who is enforcing executive order, ban all Bitcoin, who comes and knocks on your door, can be bribed or not. Well, a good litmus test is, if they take Bitcoin, they are bribable. So you start bribing them in the illegal currency. Now, that may sound funny to you, but this is exactly what happened in Russia in 1984, in the Soviet Union. In 1984, they banned private ownership of hard currency, foreign currency like dollars. Who were the first people to fill suitcases with hard currency? The Politburo, the people who signed their name on the law, of course. Right? And then, how did you know if the cop was bribable or not? Well, if they take dollars, they are simultaneously committing two crimes. Currency crimes and bribery crimes. If they are double the amount of criminal, you can probably trust them to engage in the conspiracy of... of allowing you to hold foreign currency. So now all of the cops that were corrupt started asking only for US dollars as their bribes. Within a year, the amount of hard currency flowing into Russia had quadrupled. And this is what just happened in Venezuela. And it's also what happened in India. For the second time, this has happened twice. It happened with the Silk Road. It happened in India. They just announced yesterday the Bank of India is now investigating a drug enforcement agent who shut down a Bitcoin drug ring and then stole the Bitcoin and appropriated it for himself. Which is exactly what happened with the Silk Road when two DEA agents ended up stealing the Bitcoin. 
the siren call of hard money, irresistible. Um, what it does is it creates this enormous wave of corruption, and that wave of corruption will swallow everything. So you can write the law, you can sign the law, but if breaking that law or obeying that law is the difference between I send my kids to the hospital, I send my kids to school, I feed my kids, as it is in Venezuela, no one gives a damn about the law, and nothing you can do to them will stop them. And so, as a result, all it does is make a mockery of the law. This happens in gradual stages, of course. It doesn't happen all at once. Let them confiscate the exchanges. They're going to create exactly the premium that's going to drive an enormous black market. Black market is just another word for unofficial market. 